Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Nautil arba'een, nautil etakaf, nautil khalwa, suluq, siyam fi had al majlis ya Rabbil Arshani. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri minkum. And a reminder to myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal and but for the grace of Allah that His rahmah and His mercy to dress us. And in this holy month of Rabbil Awal that entering in to the heart in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and Remembering the journey and the example that Sayyidina Musa wants to give to us. And Allah make all of tariqahs to study Surat Al Kahf and to be the people of the cave, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad. And everything that we talked about running to the cave. Then the example of arrogance and pride when somebody f thought their sovereignty and their wealth will be sufficient for them as a protection but there is no protection from Allah And then to the example of Sayyidina Musa and his dialogue with Sayyidina Khidr The Nabi Musa wants knowledges of a higher reality after witnessing the Muhammadan reality. When he asked to see the faculties of spiritual hearing and seeing, he asked to see, he witnessed the glory of Allah which is the ruhaniyat of Sayyidina Muhammad After that, I will not stop until I reach the two rivers of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah Prophet opening that one you come to me, you come to me with no title. There's no king, there's no slave, they're just servanthood in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So then the one whom asking to reach that reality doesn't matter what their station is, they are going to be humbled. Sayyidina Musa wants from knowledges, Prophet wants to teach the Muhammadan way of guidance. Sayyidina Musa's people were arrogant, arguing, continuously combative, not having manners for the messenger of the Divinely Presence. As a result Prophet wants to show that not only you want knowledges but I want for you to learn the Muhammadan way of guidance. That when you come, you see the boat, you go on the journey of the boat, then the secret of the boat came out that one, you're going to struggle in the way of Allah Don't think and people email that, I want to spend two weeks with you and just learn. Don't ever think you're going to sit with a shaykh and in two weeks he's going to pour into your, your heart what all his life and till today he is suffering under extreme testing and he's just going to give to you in two weeks, here you go zap in your heart and go on your way like McDonald's and add to it please a diet soda. It's not going to happen like that. And Nabi Musa is asking, I want knowledges, now becoming agitated, I'm here for knowledge, why are we on a boat breaking a boat? Public shame and public watching because he said, are you trying to kill these people on the boat? Nobody can see you, I'm on a boat and it looks like I'm sinking it. So that means what Prophet wants that humility versus arrogance, humility it's not that you bring tea for the shaykh, we've, we've seen those, remember those guys? Oh gee you're this. Humility is not you talk humble, oh, gee, 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 
here, here's tea for you. Humility is Allah will humiliate you, that's it. It's nothing in your control, nothing you have the ability to do. When you take the path, I want to be humble and enter through the door of humility, then Allah I will humiliate you and deflate you from the presence of people. Because that's what the pain of humiliation is to be brought down by social opinion. By the opinion of your peers to be cast down, to be talked bad about, to be propagated all over the internet and all the representatives and whisper to him, oh he I don't like him at all and all the fellow murids who already had bad character come out attacking you. To be brought down in the eyes of the public is the only door of humility. Not that you talk a certain way and you have taruf and you have all these beautiful words and you, they don't care at all for your words, you're better off not using those words because you'll be, you'll be guilty of hypocrisy. That's when we talked last night, better you don't talk in life for every word you say is going to be like a rope on your neck that you took and you act but it's like hypocrisy. So that's why the level was silence. I'll remain silent. I won't overly exaggerate words of praise and love for you. I don't really love you like that and Allah knows what's in your heart. The only way you love is after you've been humiliated. Then means you're a humble servant. So why was Zambi Musa having difficulty? He was being humiliated. He was bring, brought, bringing a, a ship down with people on it and a guide that nobody could see, coordinates that nobody could understand. So it's understanding of the Muhammadan guidance Prophet is teaching that I wanted for you to teach your people their rizq is blocking them. Because later when we're describing these levels of the nafs you're understanding the system of tariqah's guidance. Everyone's ship must be brought down and manipulated so that you big boom and bust, boom and bust you go down. Your rizq goes down you have nothing. So that when the rizq is down you have an, a nice control with people, you have an understanding with them they're looking to you eye to eye not that they're superior. And when the rizq is in danger and in fluctuation the servant is open, teach me, guide me, take me out of this life I have into a better understanding so that my rizq and my sustenance is for La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam. Wasn't that the inheritance of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq to the tariqah? What did you leave? I left La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah so it means their whole power, their rizq, their, their productivity, everything is to propagate this reality and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and they live good lives because Allah is rich, Allah is a bountiful. It's not a matter of a, a, a vow of poverty we're not going to all eat but it's the rizq that makes the person to feel they are sovereign, they're independent of anything and they hold their destiny. So, I'm a doctor, I'm independent, I have an education, I make lots of money, I don't need you people. Allah can take all of that away by morning. You get an accident and you can't use your hands for surgery. So it means there is no independence from Allah Then wanted to show Nabi Musa when you got to the boy, this is the nafs. And if your people are wild with you, you're raising them to be wild and these nafs have to be destroyed and brought down. And then the whole science of the nafs, how dare your nation ask you questions the way they did? When Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's nation was what? The nation of Samina wa Tana. we merely heard and we obey. His companions were not arguing with him and debating him they heard and they obeyed. 
So then the second test was that, he's going to show you, my Muhammadan guide will show you, this nafs and this bad ego has to go. And the third, inshaAllah we try to get to it tonight, we still have the, the lessons of the ego, is that you got to a wall. And the wall had a treasure for yateem and everybody is yateem, They're, we are all been yateems from Allah We think our mother and father are the ones that are brought us into the world but no Allah Allah is the creator, Allah is my owner and I'm a yateem from that reality. And Allah has put aside a treasure and it's it's out for the public and shaitan is trying to take it. And what is it? It's the heart of insan. The heart of insan is all that shaitan wants. He's after everyone's treasure. He knows what Allah is giving to the treasures and the hearts of creation. So he wants them. He wants to bring them into his kingdom to steal their treasure, steal their rizq, steal their, their nafs and their good character. That's why everyone's born at, at the maqam three of inspiration. What do they call this one? Mulhama. Mulhama. In English was? The English is easier to… what's the mulhama? Yeah. Which one? Inspired self. The three, inspired, inspired self. Everyone born on inspired self, a vegetable, everyone is in a state of vegetable. You can't move, right? Your parents lift you, drag you, wash you, whatever you do you can't do nothing, you're just like a cucumber. But you have two destinies now, either you're gonna go down to Amara based on your parents making you to be wild or the circumstances of the life that you're thrown into. They'll make you into amara, will you go down and become wild, crazy, angry, violent and vicious? Or your parents inspire and guide you, teach you to the best of their ability to go up, to, to have inspiration, to understand goodness, have empathy within your heart, have compassion within your heart to care, not to be judgmental, not to be against, uh, have a sense and a reality of muhabbat and love. And teaching Nabi Musa that these nafs have to be dealt with otherwise your people will become extremely difficult and they will not be in Allah's favour. And when you go to the treasure and to cover the treasure First thing that Nabi Musa asked the Muhammadan guide, let's, we're hungry, let's charge a fee for this service. And Sayyidina Khaydah said, no, 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 this is not in the permission of Sayyidina Muhammad You don't charge to be of service. A life of khidmat, a life of khidmat opens every rahmah of Allah They don't charge for knowledges. The knowledge is free but you have an obligation to support because you don't take anything free and run with it. Prophet will hold you accountable for what you learned. But they on their side they know that they should live a life of service. What do we do that we don't expect anything back from it, any fee from it, just to be of service to Allah And that's what Prophet was teaching. Your nation must be strong in khidmat, that they do what they do for Allah They do their business is business but to be of service there's a time in which to serve and expect nothing. But because Nabi Musa had asked, what about the fee, their nation they charge for their temples. When you go to the temple you pay by row. So in your first row you pay millions of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars and the poor sit in the back. So then now worshipness and money got mixed and that became an eternal sickness. There's no way out of that system. 
as soon as you charge for the temple and for the church or for anything and you say that only the rich can sit in the front, only the rich have their way to Allah and the poor they're in the back, then there will be an eternal struggle for money and everything has to be for money, everything has to be for business and it's so confused in the life that it's even for God they have to get the money. They have to go out, they have to conquer this earth so they can get a seat in the front. And all their social pressure is to get a seat in the front. So then you can see how the system is toxic. And that's from Nabi Musa asking, do, why didn't you charge for this? And Prophet wanting to explain, this is a danger. This is a, a reality you're, you're, you're not… don't introduce it into your deen and they did, they do and that's the toxicity. And every offshoot of what they taught is the same system. They taught that system to all the offshoot branches of religion and all those offshoots they charge per row, million, five hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. One, and even the back row is not free, it's such bad seats you still have to pay <coughs> something for the back row. So then now you're in a continuous difficulty of dunya. So then there was a reality in which Prophet wanted to teach Nabi Musa the Muhammadan guidance. You won't acknowledge, no problem but I want to teach you our system of guidance. So then tariqahs. They are the Muhammadan guidance system that one come to the tariqah, their du'as and Allah will begin to fluctuate your rizq and sustenance. If you make good sustenance and you're generous and good and your heart is open then you should have no problem. If you are tight-fisted the only thing that comes from tight-fisted people are lots of fights because they live a life like that, Allah will open the fist and teach the servant, no, don't let your rizq be a source of contamination that clouding you from your reality. Then take you to the boy and say that this nafs has to be tamed, the bad characters have to be tamed. We said nafs amara is the one that completely evil. When we read the characteristics of it we understand it. Self-centered, doesn't care about anyone, doesn't care how it gets to any goal, everyone every, they climb over anyone's head. Then we see those characteristics, we say, oh okay, 99% of this dunya is nafs amara. Even the television show is just nafs amara. And then we said, shawarma and then lawama because you're going to be cooking, no doubt. Allah's greatness and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad immediately put everybody out of Amara. Very few are doing those type of activities and sitting in the majlis of zikr. But the virtue of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad pulled them out of Amara and majority are in Lawama. And the Lawama was good and bad. Thumma ammanu, thumma kafaru. One day they believe, next day they go bad. One day they believe, next day they go bad. But at least the consciousness within the heart is opening. Because the other one has no epiphany, has no empathy, feels nothing is wrong, even thinks the bad is good. But the good and bad state, the yin and yang nafs. It knows, oh that was bad, Ya Rabbi tawbah, tawbah. And then begin to learn the process of istighfar and, and all of the practices, why the zikr saves and why when Allah want to guide someone out of this badness, send them to the zikrs because Allah describes, hold tight to the rope. The rope are the turuqs because they're a line of nijad and safety coming from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and immediately the shaykhs are throwing a line, a rope out 
giving the awrads, giving the zikrs, giving the nazar, giving all of the associations, giving help and email and every type of communication, hold tight to this rope. Don't think you can do yourself, the more you kick in quicksand the deeper you go down. So without a shaykh you see people thinking they make istighfar and it stops. No, they actually start to kick and agitate and they go deeper down. You talk to them a couple years later they're really in bad shape. Thinking they're going to pull themselves out but Allah loves you. If Allah loves you He doesn't want you to come to the Muhammadan way, doesn't want you to come to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Why would Allah's love want you to be independent of everyone? He wants you to come to La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah in its reality. So then in that stage they understand the struggle between good and bad, most are caught into that stage. And we said, Mulhima, the third level of the nafs, Mulhima, the inspired self that is leaning more towards positive, less in the negative. Two thirds positive, one third naughty still there. But because of the practices and the spiritual practices and all that they're doing, you're opening up your system. You're being taught how meditate, contemplate, open up your faculty of thinking, of hearing, of feeling. The danger of that is if you're not building a strong relationship, that's why they say, if you're going to teach this make a helpline, help me at Nur Muhammad for this purpose. If you're going to teach en masse how to connect your heart, how to open your heart, then the guidance and the people who are listening have to have a firm hand onto the hand of the shaykh. Because you're now about to enter a dimension that you have absolutely no understanding with. Don't hold like that but hold firm, hold firm because they're gonna whip you around. If you should let go of that hand in the middle of this, many bad things have happened to people, many bad things. Because they fall under the prey of their nafs, they end up in jails and psychiatric wards and crazy houses and they end up in the grave. Because you're not going to open your faculties, you're not going to open your heart, you're not going to open your inspiration and don't think that 10,000 shaitans are there. Hey look, his speakers are working finely. You're sitting and making tafakkur and contemplation and you're not doing it the way they said and you're mixing it with other garbage and, and other reiki and other practices. You're opening yourself to all of this craziness. No, no, you follow exactly how the tariqah tells you to do with the exact coordinates. You make it exactly how they do, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do marijuana, you don't do nothing other than what they taught you to do. And you hold firm to the tariqah because in this maqam you're going to have inspirations, heart, feelings and energies. But you don't know, was it from shaitan? Was it… and the shaitan we mean all negative energy, the bad jinns, naughty jinn. Think yourself in a masjid, they even believing jinn but not mu'min jinn. Believing beings they can… Flip your life upside down just like a bad guy in a mosque. There's crazy people in the masjid, you're sitting there and you're praying and somebody comes and starts saying weird things to you and say, what are you doing? Do you think that people who accepted Islam are not uh, bizarre? Yeah, but not a mu'min. A mu'min being never interferes because of the oath he took with Allah that he would perish if he intervened. Their, their contract and covenant with Allah they never interfere in your life. If anything is interfering in your life it's not a mu'min. The mu'min they're under bound and, and under their bayah and their allegiance. If they should involve themselves in this human life they will cease to exist and Allah will take their existence out. So anything that playing with you is not a mu'min. 
So then when you open yourself in practices you're going to feel, you're going to have inspirations and then you're going to start saying, I'm having dreams. And that's why the wisdom of their teaching. So when somebody emails or even we've said it on internet, dream, 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 the shaykh doesn't want to hear the word dream at all from you unless you think it's drastically you're dying and you saw yourself dying and you know, even that has its own reality. But the dream world as soon as you talk about this subject we just described there's a hundred ifrit also listening with us. So anytime there's two the third is shaitan, right? So shaitan's listening, huh? Eh, this guy likes dreams? Oh yeah we got you, don't worry. Who's going to be sending you the dreams? Those shaitans all day long, all day long until your whole life is dreams, 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 dreams. And you think them to be real and hundred percent false. You don't think they know a little bit of what's coming, a little bit of what's happened about a secret here and a secret there. And as soon as they got you that's how they locked you and they keep using it, keep using it. They will rule you with fear, with knowledge, with everything because you said you were interested in that so we divorced ourselves from that understanding. So Imam al-Rabbani said, don't use that, this is the lowest state. It's a reality and prophecy but you're not a prophet. Mm. Means tell yourself, I want nothing to do with dreams Ya Rabbi, I want that which is real and live. So go back under the carpet and make your tafakkur much harder. Because you have to have good character, good manners and good actions. At that time when you're sitting on your tafakkur and contemplation you feel the presence of the fires of the shaykhs. And they're teaching you that if you want knowledges are you achieving these stations? Because if you're at level one and two and you're expecting Divine knowledges to come to your heart it's not going to happen. There's no knowledge going to come like that. These are much higher levels of the nafs have to be purified. When the nafs is purified it's doing its tafakkur, it left the oceans of badness and bad character, bad inspiration, it disciplined itself not to focus on dreaming, not to focus on, on uh, incorrect inspirations and a strong connection with the shaykh. Why? Because you get inspiration they can impersonate anyone just not Prophet and not the Kamil Muhammadan guides of which they're not but a one or two on this earth. Anyone else they can impersonate and it come to you you follow Shaykh Abdul and he's his internet channel and Shaykh Abdul keep coming to you, come to me on the internet, come to me, watch my YouTube channel. You don't think they could do that? You're in the outer limits, they come to you to listen to this channel, listen to this YouTube, read this book, read that because now you taking guidance from that world instead of this hello world. Where we're right here, the guides are open to you, they're right in front of you. At that time the connection has to be strong, shaykh I'm having dreams of following this shaykh and reading this book and doing and, and taking myself because of my problem, I want to go all the way here to resolve something. My rizq is not opening with what you're saying, I saw my dream to go and see Babaji in, in this village somewhere. They will impersonate everything and their teaching is that you think it's a Divine inspiration. No, they hijack your line to take you off course. And we said last night we have had very sad incidences where the person was arguing with me that they're inspired. I said, you're not inspired. I said, I'm inspired. I said that in five minutes you put your jacket on, five seconds later you take your jacket off, you put your jacket on, you take your jacket off. He says, no I'm inspired and Imam Ali is telling me to leave. I said, look I got to tell you that it's a lie and Imam Ali has nothing to do with you and he would not tell you to leave this training. You're under the effect of a jinn who's possessing you 
not listen, not listen and difficulty comes. So this is not something that you know people understand lightly. That's why that when this level is begin to open they're doing their practices then help me they're communicating not on the color of the paint of your house and the inspiration of buying a coffee machine but the inspiration of making drastic decisions. Somebody had emailed, I'm deciding to sell my entire house and send you all the money. I said, it's completely satanic and you're not sending us that money at all. In the middle of a pandemic you're going to sell your whole home and send the money and then tomorrow say you have a problem and you have to live in my living room. That's not an inspiration from the heavens but something whispering in your ear to cause you a problem and me a bigger problem. So when there's a shaykh they know, they say, no, 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 send a small amount is good for you. So anything can come, any type of inspiration that level has to be very strong in their connection. So when they start to feel, I'm inspired, my heart is feeling good, I'm doing good then the strength and the connection with the shaykh so that they don't run. You know when we saw it in the Silat videos, the Silat masters when they're training their students, they're training them in tafakkur and contemplation and reliance. Right? Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel through the power of what's coming through these shaykhs. They train, they train, they train to be committed. The shaykh takes hot oil and he takes the oil and he put it on something you can see it goes zzzz and sizzles it in a second. And they start pouring it on. We have the videos, the silat, extreme silat training. They start pouring it on them. The shaykh is pouring hot oil all over them and you see them struggling and the shaykh is telling them, don't you go. If you run you're going to be scorched from your this burn now, stay right where you are. The, then you see the advanced one, he's standing, standing and, and trying to control his energy to shield his energy from the pain he's feeling. As soon as he, it's over he takes the shaykh's hand and begin to make a du'a on him so that all of it is relieved and taken away. So it means this is deep in Islamic realities, if you run at these stages and go out for yourself to listen to yourself to every type of whim and desire from yourself it can be very toxic. That's why then the firmness in the understanding and the connection with the shaykhs inshaAllah. Let's go to the fourth level nafs inshaAllah but tonight al-mutma'inna, the nafs of certainty. It's low so that anyone who wants to write they can write just key words and key phrases. It doesn't have to be verbatim, they'll send out the transcript that will have everything written inshaAllah. And these are from uh, Ya Ulumuddin and the Rafai Tariqahs, they have it all written in the seven stages of the nafs. Mutma'ina, it is the self that has ascended to the first station of development towards intimacy, contentment and love for Allah. Its refinement is attained through increasing commitment and through honest and sincere fulfillment of obligations with respect to the true way with all its aspects, particularly with respect to human relationships and to the conduct regarding the acts of worship. The Prophet ﷺ said, the religion is in the conduct and the best among you in character is the best in faith. The secure self has entered the pathways, the methods and means of protection and healing. Hold on one second, second. So what is it? It's adab. If you see and you witness someone with no adab and think, no they still must be pious, no. No, they could be representatives of unseen beings and their knowledge couldn't be coming from those beings. So means it's what? The way is based on good manners and good conduct because they become very soft and subtle. As they're now rising up the nature of their reality is soft and subtle, they're latif, they, they pick up and feel energies and they understand that the vibration and the tone, even their, the tone in which they speak has to be soft, never harsh, never sort of wild and crazy and screaming and yelling. The secure self has entered the pathways, the methods and means of protection and healing through self-examination, resistance, striving and devotion. 
These efforts bear the fruit of certainty in the truth that Allah alone is, in the, is the actor. He is the cause and motivator of everything, for there is no God but Him and no Lord but Him. And Allah in all of His actions is merciful and generous. He knows the best interests of the self. This certainly leads to trust in Allah. The self becomes confident that what is with Allah is, is better and more enduring than whatever is in its possession or in the possession of others. So the self becomes secure and ceases to occupy itself with anything other than who, ha who it has trust in. You don't have to worry about any more in your fighting and in your characters. No, I have to tell this person they're wrong. Uh, this person is Allah that we're just speaking through them. But I have to get my justice from this person because they did wrong. Say, no, but Allah is speaking to them too. Every situation is under the control and this understanding is tawheed. They understood everything comes from Allah Who are you fighting then? Who are you arguing? What is it that you're trying to prove in your argument? They understood because they're now witnessing Allah and everything. The one they're arguing back is more skilled and more powerful than you because the Divinely Presence is pushing you back. So then they understood, just stay quiet, stay quiet and have good character through this test because Allah teaches us, I don't change a condition of a person, of my servant until he change what's within himself. So what's the most typical? People want to move. They want to go, they say, oh I just, I'm, I'm, I want to go. But the problem is you're going too and you're the problem. It's not the location, it's you that's the problem. Unfortunately you pack yourself in the bag and you go to the next place and you're still there. And Allah promised, I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to change any condition around you. It's actually going to be intensified now because you didn't seem to get the system. So they, they understood, no I have to change. It's wholly about me. Ufawudu amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bil ibad. That for verily Allah just sees my condition and He won't change it until I change myself. And then I begin to understand everybody is going to pound me because I'm a nail and everybody's a hammer. How's the expression go? <laughs> to hammer, everything is a nail. Right? If you're a hammer, you, you hit everybody. But this is the reverse. Allah is the hammer and I'm the nail. And He's sending every character to give a little hit, ding, 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 until you are ground beef. You came through the door <laughs> as a steak, as a fillet, do you know who I am? You know who my jat are, who my ancestors are, you know my wealth, my status, my position. Ooh, that just means you're going to have more grinding because the big steaks are harder to grind down. Had you just come and said, you know I'm just like a hamburger, nothing, then no problem because with hamburger you just couple slaps and it's already ready. <laughs> they don't need to be thrown in the grinder. Blessed be the weak and the poor. Why? Because they're already down to the ground. That was the greatness of Prophet we're not selling rows in our masjid. Prophet shocked their system by saying, no, I don't care if you're a king or a slave, sit in the row and pray with me. And they were shocked that they were sitting next to a slave, we buy the rows and everyone sit in the back. And the greatness of Islam and what Prophet brought, no, 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 I don't care who's a king and I don't care who's a slave, sit in the front and pray. And the best of you is the one who comes the earliest to pray. And this was the greatness and azimat of Sayyidina Muhammad Knowing that no sickness in Islam, there's no money in Islam, there's, there's no way to buy Allah This is the first level of maturity for the self. The heart begins to shine with the light of consciousness. The ego's power begins to shrink so that purity, refinement, clarity and light dominate the heart. Now the self begins to show its true attributes that were previously hidden. These are the attributes of servanthood, helplessness, all power to Allah, humility, poverty, non-attachment, need and, and annihilation. So these are the characteristics of a servant entering into mutma'inna. That were what? Those again Shaykh? Servanthood, helplessness, um. humility. Poverty, non-attachment, need and annihilation. Hmm. You see that 
in your nafs in Ramadan, right? So you're not going to ever kill your nafs, your job is to convert your nafs. His Hezbu shaitan, he has to become Hezbollah, not from Lebanon. <laughs> but he has to be with the party of Allah in which your nafs will work with you. Say, we're not going anywhere, okay I'm going to wear my kufi, now I'm with you. And you see that nafs in Ramadan. He says, he's, this guy's committed to Ramadan, don't matter if he's going to die or not die. So he wakes you up, time to have suhoor man, we're hungry. And you see your nafs is helping you so that it doesn't stay hungry, doesn't go through difficulty, you're eating your suhoor on time, you're breaking the, the first person to break. Now he is under the command of, of his human soul, which takes pleasure in following the example of the Prophet He possesses the qualities which Allah praises. He is kind, generous, patient, forgiving, sincere, thankful, content, and at peace. Every word which comes from his lips is holy, either from the Holy Qur'an or from the tradition of the Prophet or from the teaching of his soul. He is a teacher not only through words but also by example. Miracles which transpire through him, he attributes to other causes, never claiming them, disowning them to the point of denying them. His every action corresponds to the highest. He has regained the name of insan, a true human being. The name insan is derived from the word uns, being close, intimate with one's Lord. Thus his Lord will take him by the hand and lead him forward without much difficulty from now on. It, it, its, rem, its remembrance is truth. For Naqshbandiya, not only that but they open for you the reality of what insan is. In the huruf there's an article that we have for the huruf of insan. Insan itself has two noons. In the center is a scene of realities, the secret and the seer of all realities. That what Allah want to open is the diya, that your heart, the light within the heart, the diya, the shams begins to glow. As soon as that light is sparked we call it, you've caught in, you've caught in fire, caught fire. That your light is lit within your heart, you get heated in, in associations, your sun is now about to grow. As a result of that noon closest to the alif, all the secrets of ilmu yaqeen, aynul yaqeen, haqq yaqeen will become now the oceans in which you swim. That nur will reflect to the noon closest to the outside. So that you become qamarun, so that your heart is lit and your face becomes shining and your being is filled with the secret of Sayyidina Muhammad Go. The content self. Oh we're at the next level now? No, Nafsa radiya. Return to your Lord content, Surah Fajr. Yes, Surah Fajr, Surah 89 verse 28, where Allah faraj, salvation and Fajr is the time in which to reach to Allah and then the radiya, that return unto your Lord content, in which Allah loves that servant and that servant immensely in love with Allah and it becomes an immense love affair that begins to open. As the secure self ascends to its Lord, the lights of the heart increase and fill the entire body, transforming the sensual desires of the ego to the desire for what the Prophet brought in the Qur'an. So love of Sayyidina Muhammad and this ishq and muhabbat of Allah a treasure wanting to be known and alhamdulillah Naqshbandiyatul Aliya is the immense love and immense depth of the reality into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad is not to opening. Because when you said before you're loving Allah and Allah is reflecting to you that, I want you to find me and I reflect my reality into the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And then they begin to move towards the love of Prophet nur and light inshaAllah the arwah wa nur Muhammadi Now describe these servants. Now hardship and ease are the same to it as are harm and benefit. So life and up and down no more, 
bipolar states have to stop. Means bipolar state is that aesthetically happy when things are good and extremely sad when things are bad, right? Too much fluctuation in the character, no. When the reliance is upon Allah the firmness of the heart and the death of, of emotions to understand it is like a flat line. You're not excessively happy about anything and you're not overly sad about anything. You're flat line because you're content that everything is in Allah's hands. Today we'll be happy, tomorrow we'll be sad. Tomorrow sad, eh, tomorrow we'll be happy. Doesn't really matter, it's all going to be the same. <laughs> Because it has become certain that every action and deed is from Allah alone. He is the one who grants it mercy and compassion. He is the one who is tender and benevolent towards it. Everything that is from its beloved is accepted, and so it is content with everything. At this level, the self's creed is that if it is tried, it is patient, and if it is given, it is thankful, and if it is deprived, it is accepting, and if it is, and if it is wronged, it is forgiving. It has now become the self with a wholesome and sound heart. It fluctuates in all its states between trust, tawakkul and regulation, tafweed, and contentment and surrender to Allah, tasneem. The characteristic of this self is constant cheer cheerfulness, gratitude and thankfulness, no matter what happens. This is the second stage of the complete self, which is the station of servanthood. Very few men can aspire to reach this high station. Up to, include, up to and including this level, the seeker is taught by words and or examples of others than himself through ilm al yaqeen. Now he has approached the level of knowledge through personal experience and revelations, ayn al yaqeen. Up until now everything was relative, now he is offered the truth. The manifestation of this state is love, all enveloping love. He sees all and everything as Allah's perfect acts, thus loving them as the actions of the beloved. He achieves perfect surrender to everything which happens. That is the truth of Islam. There is perfect harmony of which he is aware. There is no possibilities of error as he is the master of his nafs, and the nafs itself has become a Muslim, submitting to its Lord. He does not want anything other than what he has. Therefore he does not ask for anything for, for himself from Allah, but he prays for someone else. His prayers are immediately gratified. He is seated on the throne, he is seated on the throne in the spiritual realm, while the, while the exterior world is in attendance to serve. His acceptance, submission, pleasure, gratitude and love of his Lord are so perfect that the Lord return, responds with his pleasure for his servant in return. Then nafs al mardiya the gratified nafs. At this stage the self is not only content with its Lord but also gratified by him. At this stage the light of the heart is complete. The heart advances from wholesomeness to a heart that is in total awe of Allah, constantly inclined towards Him, imbued with humility toward Him in every condition. The people of this station are the people witnessing the manifestations of the actions of the names of Allah. They're witnessing in their hearts to the manifestations of Allah's power results in their awe in the face of Allah's greatness and majesty in all His actions, which are essentially the manifestation of His names. The people of this station are also gifted with unveiling and miracles that enable them to call people to the love of Allah. These miracles are essentially for those who deny and reject the truth, but who are at the same time called to Allah. So he sends to them miracles to the people of this station so that the egos of these people will submit to, the mir to these miracles and thus return th through Allah back to the path of Allah. For when Allah loves one of his servants, he seeks him and calls him to himself. If the servant responds at the first call, then he is brought near. Otherwise Allah seeks him through trials or through miracles. For Allah's command must come to be and it is utterly irresistible. This station is the last of the stations of faith, and through it the self enters the presence of the station of Ihsan, the most beautiful station of excellence, which is the goal and the desire of the heart of every servant. At this level is manifested the bond between the Creator and the created, with a love common to both. The Creator finds in, in the perfect man the qualities which He has bestowed on him when He created him, and He says, certainly we created man in the best form. His own beautiful names, his attributes that he taught to our father Hazrat Adam salam, become manifest in the seeker. Thus the perfect man who has attained the level of deserving Allah's pleasure has lost all his physical animal characteristics. 
as well as his imperfect human aspects. Now uh, Allah's divine attributes are manifest in him. And he sees the truth because he is blessed with Ayn al-Yaqeen. He sees beauty in everything, loves everyone, forgives the faults of those who do not know. He is compassionate, generous, giving, never asking, serving with all he has to bring others to the light of the soul and to protect them from the dangers of their nafs and the darkness of their worldliness. All this he does for the sake of Allah and in, in his name. It is difficult to recognize these beings. Their state cannot be described in words. They cannot be conceived with common ordinary concepts. Their one identifiable characteristic is that they are always in a state of perfect balance, like the center of a circle, like the fulcrum of a balance, right in the middle, neither more nor less the medium. But that one Sorry. took long time on the nafs. Is the third state in which Nabi Musa salam went after the wall. And when he approached the wall with Sayyidina Khidr salam, they were hungry. They asked and nobody gave them food. <laughs> then they came to a wall in which the order came, rebuild this wall. There are orphans here, there's a treasure and people will steal it before it gets into the hands of the orphans. And Nabi Musa asked that, after we did all of this, how come they didn't… Uh, we could have asked a fee, we could have asked for something to do this work. And tariqah comes to teach us, this is the third and related to these levels of the nafs, that if you're trying to reach towards level three and up, mulhama and up, it requires a khidmat. The only way to this treasure through the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad is a life of khidmat. Because that's the example of the shaykh that he learned from his shaykh and shaykh and shaykh and shaykh, live a life of service. Live a life of service in which you don't ask and don't ask to be paid for your service that I want this, I want that. No, 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 I, I just want to serve. If people give, alhamdulillah, and if they don't, alhamdulillah Allah sent from many ways. So it's a life of service to receive that treasure and that that treasure shaitan is after the treasure of the heart. And the, the reality of building the wall is to be vigilant with our heart, be vigilant with the treasure that Allah has set aside within insan. Alam al-Qur'an wa khalaq al-insan, Allah had taught you these realities and then created your form. There is a treasure within everyone's heart and to mine it and to bring it out the first level is to understand I have to safeguard my heart. I don't let anyone into it, I don't let anyone destroy it and I don't let myself to destroy my heart by engaging in arguments and disputes and fights and yelling and screaming because what's happening is it's crushing my heart and taking my faith away. Anyone who engages in fighting knows at the end they feel they have like no faith left in their heart. Whatever lights and precious realities were there as if shaitan stole them. So they learned how to be quiet. Because they're guarding a treasure that Allah is depositing within their heart that, I know this test is coming to steal my treasures. <laughs> I'm going to keep my wudu, I'm going to ufawud amri in Allah that, Allah Ya Rabbi please I see that you, you're watching me, not only you're watching me Ya Allah you're sending this. Give me strength and patience to be, be good in my character and then they begin to rise above it to reach towards that reality to take from that reality and their whole life was a khidmat and that khidmat opened every rahmah of their life because that was the good character that we started the whole talk with. The Prophet is describing these maqams are only the character of good, good character. He didn't say that this is the maqam of the one who memorized hadith, this is now the next maqam of the one who memorized all of Qur'an and, and this is the next one who memorized all of the memorization of everyone else's memories. Prophet described, no this is the maqam of good character. 
good character if it's displayed there should be no yelling, no screaming, no battling, all of these things they, they have to be brought down, they should not be accepted, they should not be acceptable and we struggle our whole lives to contain them. And now with what's opening upon this earth immense negativity, immense negativity. And this negativity is doing what? Not only it's killing people making them sick with the, what they think are viruses but the spiritual sickness. You see hate now propagated, you, you see amara on television and on radio so much so that when you turn on TV you watch everyone else is, is imitating this is normal. As soon as the television get off now start backbiting, backbite this, back one that, this one because you took the characteristic of the TV and that's all that Dajjal wanted. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from these realities. Ameen. That in these holy months that Sayyidina Musa salam to dress us and bless us Ameen. with that reality in which he wanted the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and took through a path of humiliation and humility and the realities of Sayyidina Abbas Qadr salam to dress us and bless us bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.